Right, we're going to be continuing where we left off with our spherical bodies for Gauss's law in our electricity and magnetism module. And for this one, we're going to be looking at a spherical shell and we're going to be looking at a spherical capacitor. So, we're going to start with the spherical shell. Now, I'm not going to be doing all the math for the spherical shell. Um, we're just going to be going over one or two little bits of concept for this. So, in uh, the last video, if you want to go back and have a look at that one, you'll be able to see that we did the point charge and the conducting and non-conducting solid spheres. And we found that for all three, when we got outside of the sphere, it was just exactly the same as a point charge, as you'd expect. If you went infinitely far away from it, it would just be a infinitesimally small, tiny point charge to you. Um, so you expect the electric field to be the same. So if you were to start, and we were to have a Gaussian surface, we'll draw two different Gaussian surfaces here from our centre point just there and you were then going to draw a Gaussian surface of some distance r there. We have no Q enclosed at this point. If you were to draw your Gaussian surface a little bit further out you still have no Q enclosed. And then this is an infinitely small point here, infinitely thin shell. So you when you cross this infinitely thin shell, all of your Q is enclosed. It's the same as a point charge. So at here, there's no Q enclosed. And then at this point, when you cross your shell, or when you get to your shell, you've got all your Q enclosed again. So from any point where you cross that shell there and get to that shell, it's a point charge. So if you were to graph that, you would just find that you have no e all up until you, the point you reach the distance to the shell we're going to call this distance here a and then it's going to be straight up and the same point charge graph and that's all you have i just thought i'd discuss what that one was there's no point going through the math right if you've seen the last video there really is no point now we're going to be discussing this one we're going to be doing the math for one of the uh, gaussian surfaces and you'll see why we don't need to do the math for the remaining three because when you're evaluating the electric field for this one, we actually have to take three surfaces. So I'm not going to draw all of them on, but you take one, which is inside the uh, positively charged part of our spherical capacitor. You take one surface, which is between, which is the surface we'll be doing. You take one surface, which is inside the negatively charged part of the capacitor. And finally, the fourth surface you do is outside of the capacitor. So what we'll do is first we're going to discuss them in order going from the centre point outwards. And we have our lengths A which is to the um, outer edge of the um, positively charged part, B is to the inner edge of the negatively charged and C is the outer edge for negatively charged. And again we're just using R for our radius for our Gaussian surface. So for our first one here we know that this bit is conducting so our capacitor, this is a conducting point so anything inside here is going to be zero we're going to have no electric field so we know this bit's zero so we don't need to do any math for that bit there so that bit's struck off straight away and now we'll take our second surface which is our surface inside here which is the one we're going to be doing the math for which is the main one here and now what you're going to find is we have our Q enclosed over epsilon naught and this is going to be equal and again for our integral we know how we do this we take um, to get rid of our dot product and our vectors we take the cosine so we'll just do that and we have our integral is E dA cos theta which is equal we can take the E out now because we've lost our vectors and our dA and our cosine of theta is just going to be equal to 1 and that means that we just get our E dA here. Nice and simple, sorry E A here. It's nice and simple that bit. Now our Q enclosed is all enclosed so that's just our charge. So we have our Q over epsilon naught is equal to E A. So our E is equal to Q over A epsilon naught. And our surface here 
it's just going to be our 4 pi r squared as it is normally for our um, spherical surface. So q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared and we know that this is just going to be then equal to k sub e q over r squared. The normal same thing as a point charge at this point. So again that should be all very very straightforward to you now from watching the previous videos on how to do that. That shouldn't be a problem. So we'll move on to our next parts then. <clears throat> and we look and we say right well now if we keep extending our sphere until we reach B now we're in another conducting surface with a negative charge. So at this point when we come out we're going to have um, as we pass through this, sorry, we're going to be able to have no electric field because we're in a conducting surface. But then when we come out of here and we take another Gaussian surface, which is going to be sort of all around here, around this edge, what we have now is we have our Q inside, our positive Q, plus, and now we have a negative Q, which is our negative charge here all over epsilon naught which is equal to our integral eta and we can see then here a positive q plus a negative q is going to be zero so that means all of this is equal to zero over epsilon naught so that therefore means the e equals zero so area obviously has a value but that means our E must not for that to equate to be zero. So what have we learned from this so far? We've learned that zero, then we have some relationship here, the same as a point charge, zero and zero. Seems pretty uninteresting. And we'll just go ahead and graph what's happening here. And if we were to graph this, we'd find that as we go along, we're having complete zero going all the way along here. And then we get to some point here, which is A. And then from A, we have a 1 over R squared. And that's till we reach a point B. And this continues till we reach a point C. And then from anywhere after C, it still remains to be 0. So this is our R, and this is our E. That would be our graph. So just to reiterate this one more time. It's conducting, so we can have no electric field. The same as a point charge, so all Q is enclosed. Conducting, so again, no electric field. And then on the outside, our charges negate each other, so our electric field must be zero. All right, so next we're going to be moving on to a cylindrical capacitor, and we're going to be using this to work from again because this is very, very similar to how we work for a cylindrical capacitor. So if you want to see that next video, just go ahead and click there. If you want to see the last video where we're working on the sphere, see what I was talking about, you can go click there. Or if you want to see more from my channel, playlists, that kind of thing, just go ahead and click down there.